gerontological or data center the IGBC, all right? Uh, also the country team leader of SHARE Israel, the Israeli component of the survey on health, aging, and retirement in Europe, uh, which is being conducted in 14 countries. And Professor Klino, writes Professor Karanex, uh, will comment. Okay, uh, good afternoon. It's already afternoon. Um, this is a joint paper with Anat and uh, Leo, who are over there, and Slava, who is not here today. Um, uh, the paper examines the antecedents and the associations of work, activity, and subjective well-being among older people in Israel. This is an important area because social policy in many countries promotes delayed retirement in order to minimize an actuarial threat to pension solvency due to retirement, uh, due to population aging. The current study draws upon data from the Israeli sample of the Survey of Health, Aging, and Retirement in Europe, which is the European version of the HRS. Uh, we examine who is employed after age 60, who is active in other kinds of pursuits, for whom such late life involvement is a source of satisfaction, and what matters most for one's personal well-being. Consideration of the antecedents of work in older age and its association with well-being is enhanced by a life course perspective. Two concepts inform the inquiry, cumulative advantage and disadvantage. They imply that those who start life with economic advantage maintain or increase that advantage over the life course, and early adversity may induce behaviors and or constraints that increase subsequent risk, particularly health risks, in late life. The the decision to continue in paid employment is related to gender, race, and ethnicity, marital status, human capital, and health. Each of these factors can condition one's passage through the life course and in turn influence the timing and the nature of retirement. Uh, for example, women and minority groups tend to accumulate fewer savings, we've already heard, and less pension, pension coverage, factors which may dissuade them from an early exit from the labor force, but both exit the labor force earlier due to lack of opportunity. Labor force participation is associated with education, which is inversely related to economic disadvantage. Occupation impacts retirement decisions. The presence of challenging work, which is more evident in higher occupational pensions, higher occup occupational levels, is one of the main reasons cited for not taking early retirement. And of course, poor health reduces the likelihood of continued work. Informal activity is associated with most of these same life course factors, and satisfaction from engagement in either work or life satisfaction uh, are also. Um, we've already had a review of the work status of the older Israeli cohort, so I'll skip that and move on to our current uh, study, which posits a hierarchical analytical model in which the work status of older Israelis cons is considered in relation to background in health, extent of informal activity is considered in relation to background health and work status, Sub, uh, satisfaction is uh, considered in relation to background health, work status, and informal activity. And finally, subjective well-being is considered in relation to all these variables. Um, I've already mentioned that the inquiry draws upon the first wave of the Israeli component of SHARE. The data were collected in 2005 and 6. Um, we focused on people aged 60 and over because we wanted to focus on those for whom retirement is a likely or approximate possibility, or a recent past one, and the data were collected by means of computer-assisted personal interviews. The variables, well, um, the range of background characteristics that I mentioned, um, income, household income uh, from all sources divided into quintiles, minority group was tapped by population group, veteran Jews, Arab Israelis, and immigrants from the former Soviet Union after 1989, those born in Israel, and another variable, the number of years in Israel. We assume that not belonging to the veteran Jewish majority, being born outside of Israel, and fewer years in the country were all potential indicators of relative minority or disadvantaged status. Family status we addressed in terms of marital status and number of children. Human capital was measured in terms of education and occupational level. Education reflected the six levels that you see before you, from primary school or less, extending up to higher education, and even extended lifelong education, as in yeshivas or other kinds of frameworks. Occupational level 
was uh, based upon the ISCO coding, and it, we coded them in six ascending levels of complexity, um, from the most simple unskilled work up to senior management and professional employment, two additional categories, those professions which could not be fit into any level, and those for whom there was no job description. That last group was mostly women who had an average of five children, so it's most likely that um, that missing occupational data came from full-time mothers who never had been in the workforce. Health status was addressed by four variables, illnesses, symptoms, difficulties in instrumental activities of daily living, and then finally, a self-rated health measure from very bad to very good. Um, there were four dependent variables in this inquiry. First, employment status, who was working or not. Then, informally active status, the extent of informal engage engagement in informal activity. We uh, multiplied the number of kinds of activities with the frequency of activities and reached an activity score of 0 to 21, potentially. A third dependent variable was satisfaction with involvement, whether in work or in informal activity, which ranged from very dissatisfied to very satisfied. In the final regression, we turned that into dummy categories so that we could run them separately. And finally, well-being was measured by depression or depressive symptoms as measure, measured by the Euro D depression, depression scale. Um, now, this is the series of results. It's a path diagram. Um, before we get to that, I'll just point out some of the univariate results. About half the sample was women. The age range from 60 to 95. A third had primary schooling or less. 30% had completed secondary school, and a fifth had uh, university degrees. Over three-quarters came from the majority Israeli population group, Jews who had immigrated before 1989 or were born here. 13% were Arab, and 9% were from the former Soviet Union. Uh, the dominant reported occupational level was the second level, almost a quarter of the sample. About 12% had the highest level job, and only 5% the lowest level. Um, One-fifth of the sample was employed at the time of the survey. The average extent of informal activity was less than two, and the highest was only 14 out of a possible range of 21. Most people were satisfied with what they were doing, and, seven, and, and, um, and the average number of depressive symptoms was three. Now, we move to the multivariate stage of the analysis, the first phase was a logistic regression with the dichotomous work status variable as the outcome. Uh, each significant path in this part of the diagram shows the odds ratios. So we're looking now at this part up here. Uh, respondents who were older were less likely to be working. Women and those with greater IADL difficulties were even less likely to be engaged in paid employment. Persons with households having greater incomes were less likely to be employed. In contrast, a greater likelihood of working was noted among respondents who had a university degree and among those with better self-rated health. Occupational level was unrelated. This collection of variables explained about 46% of the variance in work status. The remaining paths all reflect beta coefficients, and uh, if we look at the predictors or the correlates of active and formal engagement, we see that it was explained by eight variables, seven of them positively so, self-rated health, belonging to the majority veteran Jewish population, number of children having a university degree or secondary schooling or other schooling, and female gender. IADL uh, difficulties were inversely associated. Active work status was only marginally inversely related to the extent of informal activity, and as such, there is no path between these two uh, uh, outcome variables. Um, the study variables predicting informal activity accounted for some 17% of the variance. The next stage regressed all the variables on satisfaction. And as you, um, we, of course, limited that to only those people who were involved either in informal activity or in formal work. And that was only 552 respondents uh, of the sample. And only two variables were found to be associated, self-rated health and number of children. Finally, moving to the ultimate subjective well-being outcome, 
the number of depressive symptoms was most strongly associated with health status, positively correlated with the number of symptoms and IDA, IADL difficulties, and negatively correlated with self-rated health. A high degree of satisfaction with either work or informal activity was a negative correlate of depressive symptoms when compared to low satisfaction, but moderate satisfaction was not. All the educational levels were associated with fewer depressive symptoms when compared to primary schooling or less. Female gender was associated with greater depressive symptoms, and older age was associated with fewer symptoms. Extent of engagement in informal activity was correlated with fewer depressive symptoms. And finally, the lowest occupational level was positively related to the number of depressive symptoms when compared to the highest occupational level, and together these variables explain some 48% of the variance. Okay, so what does this mean in relationship to this inquiry? We posited that work status in this sample would be variously associated with both cumulative advantage and disadvantage, and this assumption was largely confirmed. Work status was positively associated with university level education and health, both indicators of advantage. Active work status was inversely related to household income, suggesting that those with fewer financial resources, a measure of disadvantage, were more likely to continue working. As for gender, Israeli women had a lower likelihood than men of being employed after age 60, despite their assumed lower lifelong earnings. We posited that the extent of involvement in informal activities would be positively associated with indicators of cumulative advantage and negatively so with measures of disadvantage. And we indeed found that higher education was related to greater engagement in late life activity, as was membership in the majority group in Israel and good health. However, neither income nor occupational level emerged as significant correlates, suggesting that financial or occupational disadvantage did not suppress the capacity of people to be involved in informal activity in older age. Women were more likely to be active than men informally, as were people with a greater number of children. I'll get back to this later. We hypothesized these same directions of association between advantage, disadvantage, and satisfaction from any activity, that is work or informal activity. The assumed positive association with cumulative advantage was confirmed in relation to self-related health only. The better one's perceived health, the greater the degree of satisfaction from involvement. Given the lack of other health correlates, we can't negate that it may have been positive effect that stood behind the subjective rankings of both health and satisfaction with involvement. No indicators of cumulative disadvantage were related to the satisfaction outcome. This may be due to the fact that the measure included either work-related satisfaction or satisfaction from informal involvement. Two shortcomings should be noted nevertheless. The analysis was of cross-sectional data, and there's a possible overlap between some measures, particularly self-rated health, satisfaction with work, and depressive symptoms. Moving on to conclusions, satisfying work and or informal engagement are indeed associated with subjective well-being in late life. Informal activity seems to be related to well-being independently of other factors, including degree of satisfaction from the activity. This is not the case for all late-life employment. Continued work per se is not necessarily a correlate of well-being. Efforts need to be made to allow older people to engage in satisfying work if it is their desire to do so as an additional means by which to promote their well-being. Universal delayed retirement may be unbeneficial for some older people, particularly for those whose lives were characterized by cumulative disadvantage. As a final note on this outcome, we note, my authors, co-authors and I, that the number of children was positively related to satisfaction from activity of any kind. Pairing this finding with the corresponding one in the previous outcome suggests that larger families in Israel may spawn both greater informal activity and greater satisfaction from it. We posited that cumulative advantage would be negatively associated with the presence of depressive symptoms and cumulative disadvantage would be positively associated. These assumptions were upheld in relation to human capital. All the educational levels were associated with fewer depressive symptoms when compared to those with primary education or less all else considered. Correspondingly, 
the lowest unskilled occupational level was related to greater depressive symptoms even after controlling for health, the primary predictor. Income level, minority, and family status were unrelated. Women were found to report greater depressive symptoms after taking everything else into account. Interestingly, and this is a finding that I love reporting on, chronological age was inversely related to the depression outcome, uh, indicating that age net of poor health and other aspects of disadvantage may indeed be a positive correlate of mental health in late life. The primary correlate of negative emotional state among the activity variables was the measure of one's extent of satisfaction with involvement, whether it was paid employment or informal activity. Moreover, the, ex the extent of informal activity maintained a modest, independent, inverse association with the depression outcome, suggesting that informal activity was a correlate of respondents' emotional state independently of the extent to which they were satisfied from it. In contrast, work status was not related to subjective well-being, all else considered. This reinforces the position that not all work is beneficial for older people or that work is not beneficial for all older people, particularly among those for whom continued employment is required financially rather than desired. When satisfying work or satisfying informal activity was taken into account, work status per se had no independent association with the well-being outcome. Many but not all of the factors that impact well-being in late life are associated with work status and older age as well. Thus, people's decision to continue in paid employment and their subjective well-being in late life may both be seen as the products of life course events and transitions. This implies that the ability to change late life outcomes that are rooted in lifelong processes may be more limited than we would like to believe. Thank you.